every once in a while you meet a team and you just go, wow. The energy that you feel in the room is electric. It's like you are getting through a magnetic field. That's what happened to us when we met Steven and Yannicka the first time. We truly live in what we define the age of the customer. But as customers, our experience daily with offline retailers is actually quite dear. It could be much, much better. At, in online businesses, we've learned to actually know everything we can about experiences for our users and customers because we have multiple touch points. What are they buying? What are they viewing on online sites? And we have Google Analytics and more to tell us what actually happens. But as we look at it offline, the equivalent does not exist. So offline retailers are missing key insights and data about their customers. How do they feel? How do they react? What do they want? So then X company from the Netherlands is going to tell us how they're going to empower millions of offline retailers to understand deeply how their customers' experience works and making it better with deep insights. So from the Netherlands, I'm really excited to welcome here on stage Janneke van den Hoevel and Steven Kroon. <laughs> We just love this screen. And not just because these are cool brands, but we're so proud to say that they're actually our paying customers. Now, Sana already mentioned it before the break. At the end of the day, everything is about customer experience. So this is our product. At Trilux, we measure real-time customer experience. We ask you one question at a time. And as a consumer, you can either like or dislike. Now, and to explain how it works, let's pick a brand and show you a real example. Now, in the lobby, I already saw some members of the board from Albert Heijn. So, let's go for Jumbo. <laughs> when you enter a supermarket, the first thing you see, fruit and vegetables. Now, I think their fruit looks quite fresh, so I'm going to give them a like. I'm a bit of a bio-help freak. So, whenever I need a bread, it needs to be a special one. So, Luckily, today, they have my bread. That is another like. Now, supermarkets struggle getting customer feedback. Currently, they are using those long and annoying surveys. And let's be honest, nobody wants to fill out these forms. In fact, only 15 people leave them feedback like this every month. And to put that in perspective, that's only zero 0.02% of their monthly customers. So I think it's safe to say that they don't have a clue how their customers are feeling. Now, we'll show you some data that we've been collecting, and this is coming from the actual store. And on the question, was your bread available? This month alone, already 690 people responded. On average, Trilikes gathers between 10,000 and 12,000 responses a month. So in their traditional methods, that would have taken them 500 years. <laughs> now, let's continue. They are scoring a 8.5 at the moment out of 10, which is quite good, but their goal is to be above a 9.0. I can't imagine some of you think, OK, 10,000 responses, that is a lot. But what about children that keep pressing multiple times? We thought about that too. So we've built in a delay that prevents you from pressing more than once during a couple of seconds. And we can measure the size of your finger. So if it's too small, it won't even work. Now, as we walk down the aisle, we run into these boxes. And I always hate it when this happens. So in this case, let's give them a dislike. 
As you can see, a lot of people tend to agree with Steve. Now let's fast forward a little bit. We place quite some questions in one store. And this is because we want to measure every key performance indicator. At the end of the store, right before you leave, there's an important question. Would you recommend us? Now, if this recommendation is low, meaning it got a lot of negative feedback, then one of the other questions in the store must be the reason. Now, in this example, more people did not find the aisles being clean enough. Our system can automatically detect these correlations and trends, so it can proactively send out push notifications to a manager. Why is this hard data so important for companies? Because 80% of CEOs believe that they are delivering an outstanding customer experience. But only 8% of us, the consumer, feel that way. In the US, they have a nice saying for it. Assumption is the mother of all fuck-ups. Now, TriLikes takes away these assumptions, because perception is reality. And now, let's also look at Albert Heijn, because we were allowed to show you a really nice business case. So, long queues at cash registers for supermarkets is a big problem. Our system detected a consistent spike of dislikes on Fridays around 4 and 9 o'clock. So, it began to proactively send out push notifications to a manager, saying, pay attention in the upcoming hour. Now, because managers want their employees to act quickly upon these issues, we've placed big screens at the back of their store, which helps them to take action. Albert Heijn even decided to put up screens inside of the shop to show their consumers how they were doing. Now let's look at the results. Remember, they were receiving a consistent 21% dislikes. Every Friday, the same problem. So after sending out this push notification to the manager, putting up screens for employees, look what happens. 3% dislikes only. That means that the queues at the cash registers are gone. Now, you might still say, these are small issues. But training your employees to deliver outstanding customer service is a huge continuous undertaking. Happy customers stay, they come back more often, they spend more money, and most importantly, they tell their friends. So since we launched our product in March, We've been signing up customers at a rapid pace. In 10 different countries. Exactly. And by selling our subscriptions, we're making a bit more money every month. We closed 2015 with a turnover of 160,000 euros. And although the year has just started, it has been amazing. In the past three weeks only, we signed for another 80,000. Now, take our current customers. Calculate the number of stores they have in the Netherlands only, and you'll be looking at a turnover of 30 million euros. But Trilikes is suitable for many more branches. So we're just getting started, and we can expand in those other countries. Now, how were we able to so quickly roll out to all of these customers? And that's because we worked really hard to keep things simple. Take McDonald's as an example. One of their managers invited us at their restaurant. And as we were talking, they became really enthusiastic about our product. But then they said, well, this is going to be too hard to implement because you need power outlets installed, you need to connect to a special Wi-Fi network, which means you need to have headquarters IT department involved, and the list went on. But what they did... What they didn't, sorry, it always makes me laugh when I talk about this. <laughs> what they did not know is that we already secretly took two devices with us. And as I entered the store, I dropped it at the exit. They were looking for a table. Janneke quickly placed it at the cash register. So while they were saying that it would be so hard to implement, we could take out our phone and show them in real time how their customers were feeling. We don't need your Wi-Fi. All of our devices have their own mobile cellular network, and they run from battery. So it really is this simple to get started. Talking about the start, how did we game, came here? Before TriLikes, we were in the online business, and here you can measure 
everything of online consumers. So we thought, how cool would it be if we could do the exact same thing in the offline physical world? Now, normally we don't mention this, but our measuring points are already equipped with tons of sensors. We can measure sound, lighting, turbulence, movement. If you take that data, correlate it with our data and existing company data, that's when things even get more interesting. Now, Yannick and I have created many, many more products before. And some even made pretty good money. At one point, I even started to believe that I was golden boy and that we were the golden team. We thought about unicorns and double rainbows. But that made our sales cycle so complex that in the end, we failed miserably and we lost all of our hard-earned money. So this time around with Trilikes, we do things differently. In sales, we don't even mention all of the options and possibilities. We keep it simple. Even so simple, I remember our very first sales meeting. We went in there with a prototype <laughs> and all of a sudden, we sold 50 me measuring, point measuring points on the spot. So while we were partying back in the car, <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, we looked at each other, we thought, Oops, uh, that was just a prototype. Um, <laughs> now we needed to really get going and deliver this within the month because we said it was no problem, of course. Now, in our workshop, we have quite some tools to, to build all of these stuff. We have a lot of machinery to build most of it. But we had one essential part missing. In order to make our custom electronics, we needed a special soldering oven but they cost 20,000 euros. And since we lost all of our money, we had to become a bit more creative. He sends me this text message of a little oven. Now, I've known Steve for quite some years now, but believe me, I was so surprised when I got up to what I like to call his little Tony Stark room, and I saw that he actually modified a 25-year little oven into a professional PCB baking oven. That's what we call bootstrapping. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, this was a really, really intense month for us. But with our amazing team, we worked around the clock and made sure that we were able to ship all of our units in time. Now, this picture was taken just 11 months ago. And for those of you who might still think that we're baking PCBs and doing kitchen table assemblies, those days are long gone. We have already partnered up with the big manufacturers to keep up with our ever-growing demand. Still, a lot of people keep telling us, don't do your own hardware. It's too difficult. You will lose your money. Just buy whatever is out there. But isn't it funny that the brands we all love, like Apple, Nest, Tesla, they all started with their own manufacturing. Would they have been so successful if they would just buy off-the-shelf components? Alan Kay is one of Apple's most brilliant software engineers. He said it best. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. Now, this oven story <clears throat> was not just a funny little story. In a market that is changing so fast, it is super important to own the full stack. Because if a customer comes back with an interesting idea or we catch feedback in the market, we can actually test if this works. How does it work in manufacturing? Does this work in software? Does this influence our sales cycle? And by quickly running through this process, that allows us to iterate our product in a way you can never do with a big manufacturer. Now, let's end with our goals for 2016. We are really looking forward and we feel confident about the upcoming year because we are using one of the oldest business models in the world, which is that you build a product, then you sell this product, and then you collect money in the bank. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> now, being serious, Steve and I promised each other we will never start another company without making revenue from the very start. 
So with our team, we are building a solid and healthy company first. And although we are not in need of an investment right now, it doesn't mean we're not interested to talk to you, because we have ambitious goals. So if you like our story, then we are more than happy to share them with you. Thank, Thank you. you.